Firefighters battle a blaze inside a dilapidated old house in downtown Jacksonville, but they aren't here to put the fire out. They want to make sure this building burns to the ground. It's part of a live burn exercise that will give valuable training to the Jacksonville Fire Department and remove blight from the city's downtown area. But before anyone strikes a match, a lot of work is done to prepare. Community Development Administrator Lily Gray says the demolition at 402 Mill Avenue is part of a larger plan. Our strategy for downtown redevelopment is to bring people back to downtown, to make downtown a destination place again like it used to be. The city of Jacksonville has been working over the last several years to tear down dilapidated structures and remove uh, slum and blight conditions in the downtown area. We've torn down over a dozen buildings in the past two years. And the unique thing about this one is it allows us to stretch our resources and provide training to our firefighters while still eliminating a slum and blight condition in the neighborhood. A lot of work goes into making sure this house is ready to burn. The house must be gutted for safety reasons. We help coordinate the asbestos removal. We have to make sure that the, all hazardous materials are removed before any demolition occurs. So we coordinated that piece for the fire department and prepared the structure for them to actually go in safely and, and conduct their burn. This is a residential house that was uh, owned by Hunter Hadley uh, and he wants to redevelop this site and uh, he's donated uh, the house for our use for conducting a live burn operation in. Deputy Chief Spencer Lee is leading the exercise and he has carefully examined every inch of this structure. Part of the preparation uh, to prepare the house for live burn training required us to be able to evaluate the house to see if it was actually a good live burn candidate house. We actually have to have a house that, even though it's about to be demolished, to be in somewhat sound shape because we're going to be entering in and out of as a structure as firefighters during a structure fire. This training not only keeps firefighters and citizens safe, it also keeps insurance rates low for homes inside the Jacksonville city limits. We're conducting a live burn uh, for training, particularly for some of our new firefighters, and we're also preparing some more seasoned firefighters to become live burn instructors. Inside the house, a carefully crafted structure is being built to burn. So what these guys are doing right now is they're building what we refer to as a burn set. Uh, and this is how we'll get the fire propagated inside the structure to help facilitate creating an environment like they would experience in a real uh, structure fire. The burn set is about as low tech as you can get. This is just wheat straw that we buy locally. It's a uh, tender kindling uh, that uses to help propagate uh, the fire, help build it fast. Uh, this is a a much better control burning material than something say like gasoline. Gasoline is very volatile so we want to use something that has a, uh, uh, it, it, it will still create a hot fire but it'll burn in a more controlled manner. Alright, go get the thing. Controlling the fire's behavior will keep firefighters safe while still keeping the training realistic. And as the fire started at the bottom of the pile and tra uh, travels up to the top, starts rolling across the ceiling, it'll give them an experience they would uh, likely encounter in a real structure fire. Real quick, team one. There's one final safety briefing before the burn. Two possible entries on this house, front door and side door. Check your patterns before you go in. Radio communications, anytime you make entry, anytime you exit the structure. Flames are the least of the firefighters' worries on this hot July day. Primarily, the biggest safety concern that we have today is the fact that it's, you know, in the high 90s. Firefighters work in an, uh, in extremely uh, volatile environments and, and wearing turnout gear and things of that nature adds to the body heat. And when they're exposed to high temperature environments like they have here today, it, it just compounds the problems that they experience. The Jacksonville Police Department cordons off the area. Well, we're helping provide traffic control, uh, blocking off the streets, um, so the fire department can concentrate on doing their training with the control burn um, and to answer any questions when citizens might walk up, they can talk to us first and uh, we can just explain what's going on. Homeowner Hunter Hadley watches with mixed emotions as the fire is started. I hate to see it go down, but it's been, I think that house was built in 1918 and uh, it would have cost more to restore it than it would to tear it down and start over. 
Hadley is a former Marine who came back to Jacksonville because it has a special place in his heart. We retired from Raleigh, came back down here. Uh, we built a house down in the old section and I didn't like what we saw so we started buying old houses and tearing them down and this is our house and as soon as we get it torn down we're going to put something nice there so we're basically trying to rejuvenate downtown Jacksonville. Fires are being set and put out one at a time during the training and after each fire is extinguished the house must be inspected to make sure it's safe for training to continue. The house is uh, holding up pretty well uh, which is always a concern of ours when we're trying to do live burns inside of a wooden structure. Uh, so we have to be concerned about the structural integrity of the house. And after every burn's done, we look at the house, uh, the structural components of the house, make sure it's holding up well for the firefighters. And it's, it's doing pretty well. During training, temperatures inside the home rise fast. And the only thing separating firefighters from flames is a few layers of clothing. The firefighters wearing the turnout gear that they have, they're, they're very protected. That don't mean they can't get hurt, but they're very protected by the turnout gear they have, which helps prevent them from feeling some of the environment that they're in. As you can imagine, when you got a lot of fire rolling inside of a structure, inside of a closed-in space, it gets intensely hot in there. At the ceiling, you're talking about temp temperatures upwards of 1,200 to 1,700 degrees, depending on what's burning. They don't feel quite those temperatures, but they'll feel it getting up to upwards about 200 degrees or so. This view from a firefighter's helmet camera shows a rarely seen perspective, but the video only captures a fraction of the experience. It's intensely hot. The gear that they wear also uh, muffles sound, so it's difficult to hear. It's difficult to speak because you're behind the mask. We got a limited field of vision having that mask on, and then when you complicate things by the amount of smoke, when the smoke, when they, when they attack the fire, it goes to zero visibility. Literally, you cannot see your hand in front of your face in a lot of instances. Experiencing this in a training environment prepares firefighters for the real thing. A lot of the skills, you know, they're learning, you know, when they go in there, they're learning about fire behavior. So they're going to sit back and actually look at the fire and look at the different stages of, you know, growth that it's going through. They're going to look at, you know, what it does as they go through extinguishment. So they'll learn, you know, some different techniques, proper ways to extinguish a fire. We're using it as an opportunity for our up and coming officers. So they're doing some training as team leaders. We also have some personnel who are going to be uh, furthering their fire instructor certifications and becoming live burn instructors. So they're actually going through training on how to become the instructors to take people through these types of evolutions. So we've got a lot of skills that we're accomplishing with this. It's getting late and all of the training fires have been extinguished. There's just one last fire to set, the one that will take this old house to the ground and help prepare downtown Jacksonville for new growth. It's been a long day leading up to this point and it's taken weeks of behind the scenes work by Chief Lee and many others to make the live burn happen. Doing something like this requires a coordination of a lot of resources and there's a lot of people that's had a, a part in helping make this happen. I'm very appreciative for all the efforts that everybody's put into making this happen from the folks with the Jacksonville Fire Department to Onsdale County EMS and uh, the city administrators and other city departments to have a hand in, in helping us put this together. This live burn is just one example of the training that the Jacksonville Fire Department conducts year-round to stay in peak performance. If this fire was a real emergency, the Jacksonville Fire Department could be on the scene in about four and a half minutes. Firefighters uh, conduct a job that, that's very dangerous, very dynamic, so they have to be engaged in training all the time to maintain new technology, cutting edge procedures for structural firefighting. I've been doing live burns uh, probably for about 15 years and I can tell you over my experience as a firefighter I have learned something it seems like every time I've conducted a live burn you really can't put a price tag on this type of training. 
On this night, it's more than training. It's a boost to the city that will help revitalize downtown Jacksonville when a new home rises from the ashes.